Screaming Friends, it's a Langsir again with a... This is an Aber of Killer build, and I know this because the person who made this build, which is not me, I'm gonna make this abundantly clear, I just found this build from someone else. The second person in Cycle 2 to kill Aberoth in Hardcore. Was it in Hardcore or was it just in regular killing him? I don't even remember. But he ran a Warlock build. The only Warlock build I found that is good right now. All other ones kind of suck. But this is 170 corruption. Uh, it's not crazy. I've played it earlier on 250 and killed uh, Royer just fine with it. Nothing crazy. Uh, can easily do Aberroth or any higher corruption than that. And the idea is just that it is a regular curse damageable time warlock. Nothing really crazy. I actually have to kill this fucking spire. Right? Otherwise I can't even talk. So let's fast forward this a little bit. What you want to do is actually very simple. You cast your Fissure, then you also cast your Spirit Plague, and you also want to shoot the Chaos Bolts, because that gives you, from your Scales of Terra, some more cold damage, which they are cold damage, so that's what you want to do. And sometimes you also want to go into Profane Veil, because that's not just your uh, evasive mechanism, it also does more damage to Curses, and it creates these orbs, when you move around, the, these orbs here, which do a lot, a lot of damage. But Fissure is really, and Fissure and casting Spirit Plague, the Q, over this, is your main damage dealer, and they also apply all the debuffs and um, curses and thought damage. Literally everything is applied by these. So the great thing about this is you have two evasive mechanisms, right? While the other ones do all the damage, and it applies a ton of stacks of damage on the enemies. So this is what makes this build so good. You can kite with evade and your transplant and your profane veil while the damage has been done by Kefanic Fisher, that's sort of the idea I was going with with the Blood Warlock, but this one seems to do more damage. So again, I'm going to show you in a second, this is not actually my build, it is by this great gentleman. Seolfa, Seolfa, I don't know, Seolfa. He only has 470 views on this video, so I wanted to share it. Uh, yeah, world's second hardcore kill, two minutes later than the Shadow Dagger Rogue one by, by this gentleman. Cestarix, he was the first one who also got the credit by EHG. He was two minutes later. Feels bad, I guess. Um, but this build, this is where I got it from. So props to Seolfo. All the credit goes to him. I did not change it. It's exactly the build as he was playing it. I just wanted to share it to a wider audience because you finally can have a Warlock build that actually is good. So what is it? Let's look at the items first. We have, for the first time ever, I've seen actually someone run this, the Marina's Lost Soul. What does it do? It does spell necrotic damage, increases curse damage by a lot, that's our key thing, we want more curse damage. Spell mana cost reduction, nice. Spell necro damage, more spell damage, cast speed, necro pen with possess per stack of damned on you, which would be you, every time you cast a spell you get damned on you, so this works. And 10% reduced health, which is a bit annoying, but not crazy. Also, a high life build, as you realize, it's not Exanctionist and Lessers of the Living, it's a high life build, which is great. You can end up at like 8k ward in between, it's kind of crazy. But you need this for sure. I would say you need, you kind of need all of them to be really killing Aberroth, you need all of these uniques to really do that. But the, the ones you definitely need are Marina's Lost Soul, Bone Claymore, Barboot, and the Twisted Heart, so you actually survive at all. This is a big part of your damage. Uh, it might not look like it, but it is, and this is also uh, additional damage and survivability. So what he's done very greatly there is, he went for a lot of bonus damage reduced from crits and armor. He was actually stacking armor a lot. See, uh, two and a half thousand armor. And I never really liked armor because it only shields against 70% of damage. Um, but it's unlike in other games, where uh, armor only protects against physical damage. In less epoch, armor protects against everything, just only 70% of it. But from my playtesting, and I was doing a lot of over 200 corruption um, echoes with this build, it works very well. You rarely take real damage, or really like a lot of damage, because of the crit avoidance and the armor. So that's pretty neat. Anyway, Bone Clem Barboot is a simple one. Uh, you guys know how it works. One ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. As you see, I have 287. In his build, I think he had more than that, over 300. 
but that's my build right now. So even though it's his build, this is how I will share it with you because this is what I've been playing. Then we have, of course, the Twisted Heart of Icarus. You know how it is. It gives you 40% increased health, which is nice. But also 70% of current health converted to Ward when you directly cast an Necrotic spell. But also with an Elemental spell, because, you know, our Chaos Balls is turned to Cold. Converted to Cold. So we gain even more Ward from this as well. So we, you kind of want to iterate between Chaos Bolts and Spirit Plague on, on the enemies while your Fissure is doing damage. That's pretty much the idea with it. Plus 1 to Necrotic and Elemental spells, very simple. Strength, Cast Speed, all good. Then we have the Conference of Fate. This is also a great thing because of the Implicit. 40% less damage over time taken. It's awesome. Very awesome. Damage... Specking against damage over time is very difficult in Last Epoch, so this is a great, great new addition. I like this a lot. Spell Fire Damage, which works on your Cofanic Fissure. Fire Damage taken on hit. I mean, it feels bad, but that's what it is. Uh, spell Damage... Uh, spell Necrotic Damage. That's yeah, great, because we do a lot of Damned and yeah, Cofanic Fissure Damage and also Spirit Plague. We do all take more Necrotic Damage. More spell void damage, we don't need this, but it's just in there, right? That's basically how this is. It's the trifecta of, of these things. But the less damage taken over time, that's pretty nice on this one. Now, as Cast for Terra, I gotta explain a little bit. You have the implicit 10 int spell crit, that's nice. I have necrotic damage on um, the ethics because I got this from the Nemesis. If you can get cold damage on this, it's probably better. I wouldn't say better, but one of the two is very helpful. Because cold damage also works in your Chaos Bolts. Elemental Resistance, 21% is actually quite a lot. Attunement gives you more mana. Int gives you more wall retention. Caspi, great. And then we have the Infusion things. We only need the Cold Spell Grants, Cold Infusion. What does it do? All right. It's going to turn very small. I don't know if you can see it. Basically, you, if you cast a Cold Spell, you gain this Cold Infusion. And it gains one stack every second, up to 10 stacks. One stack means 10% more Cold Damage and 6% less Fire and Lightning Damage for 10 seconds. That's a lot of text. Basically, it means if you cast your Chaos Bolts, you can see down here, you now have Cold Infusion, 10% more Cold Damage per stack, and the stacks um, get up every second, so you do up to 80% more Cold Damage, and this Cold Damage also applies to the Chaos Bolts, which are automatically cast by your Cophonic Fissure. So you cast your Fissure, you just use your Spirit Blake and cast your Chaos Bolts, and Spirit Blake back and forth, and the Chaos Bolts that come out of the Fissure also do 80% more damage then. So this is very good with this build, very strong. The other ones are Classic, Int, Int, Health, Less Bonus Damage Taken, Necrotic Damage, Cold Damage. This is actually insane, this build. If you can get it to this, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. But this was a, pretty much a lucky roll. Intelligence, Necrotic Damage, Endurance, also nice. Damage over time increased. This one is also insane. More area for area skills, so bigger Cofanic Fissure. Wall Decay Threshold. Necrotic Resistance. I'm stacking Necro Rest here because that helps us with this guy, right? Gives us more ward. That's what we want. And here, a tier 6. Reduced bones damage taken from crits. Because the bosses do a lot of crits, right? Critical strikes, stun strikes, all this kind of thing. So, removing that is very awesome. Like 40% of it. Very great. And we have also Int again, and Strength, and Strength, as you know, also gives you Armor, so we're stacking Armor again. And on here we have, you, you need this really, you need uh, at least 3, plus 3 to Kefanic Fissure, so a tier 6 on Kefanic Fissure you kind of need. Because it also gives you a lot of damage over time, but that's great. And uh, Necrotic Resistance again, to stack this Armor again, to stack our Armor. Um, damage Reflected is cool, but not really necessary. The Implicits are bad. I don't need damage leeches health. It does help, but it's not really necessary. Um, there would be a better one that has resistances on it. I didn't find that one. But if you this was just where the Kefanic Fissure was sitting on, so I had to go with this. Very simple. So basically what you do is you scale intelligence as much as possible. We're sitting here on 91 intelligence because that scales all your damage, right? Then you go with Necro damage, Cold damage. Or Necro Rest. Necro Rest is your survivability. The other damage types are damage, obviously. And of course, at least one or I would say two items should have bonus damage reduction from crits to make you survive better. At least two of them should have it, I feel like. Now, idols, you need these. 30% increased duration for Profane Veil. I have it twice. Because the longer you are in Profane Veil, the more damage you do, because there is a Profane Veil buff on your Curses. 
So you want to have this. This does more damage. And also spell damage for curses. If you have this twice, even better up here. This one's just health. So you kind of want to have these. The first time ever, I really put idols for damage other than health and stuff. So that's actually kind of cool. Blessings are pretty much the same as always. We go, if we can, with um, resistances. Over here, physical resistance. And then there is lightning resistance. Void Rest. Here I went with Necrotic Damage because it's really the best thing I got from this one. And Frailty on hit, also pretty nice. Because Frailty means the enemy does less damage. That's what we want. Skills. Let's actually start with the Fissure. Because that's our main, main thing, right? This is a torment build, so we gotta go down here, right? Especially here, um, tormented enemies. Light effigies. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, we actually wanna go, yeah, this one. Torment deals more damage based on your uncapped necrotic resistance. So while necrotic resistance also is health, it is also damage, okay? Necrotic damage, this is necrotic damage, torment. Uh, so if you stack necrotic damage, that's also fine. But necrotic grass is also very good. So both is good necrotic damage or necrotic grass. Both basically increases your damage. And over here, um, inflict more necrotic damage per 1% added critical strike multi. Though that's another thing to make damage stronger. And crit multi also helps with your with your chaos bolts, fissure. Even though we are more on damage over time, but it's, it's a nice addition. You want to max these as always, the bigger fissure and the chaos bolts and all the spirits. Then you definitely want to have two in necrotic grass and one in fire grass as well, which is nice because it also does, of course, fire damage. And then, very genius of this guy is um, does more fire damage, but also now does acid skin, which is poison damage. And this is even more poison damage. Yeah, bonus crit chance, right? So, you will see going through all these, we, we put on all the curses, all the damage over time, all the ignites and whatever it is, you, we put it all in the enemy. So you see at the, bar, at the top of the bar, you see a lot of Negative elements on the enemy. And this is sort of the idea of the base warlock. This is a base warlock build. Just all the curses and all the damage over time. So we auto cast Chaos Bolt. So let's look into it. Chaos Bolt basically just, again, here, damned, ignite. Um, they deal more damage to everyone who has a negative element. Then we turn the Chaos Bolts into cold. So we get the Scales of a Terror buff and a little bit of uh, chill chance. That's also nice. But the key thing is down here. We cast Rib Blood per intelligence, right? Go down here, we gain health from cursed enemies. And it refreshes the duration of the curses, and we also cast Bone Curse, another curse on the enemies, because curses help us deal more damage. So these are afflicting even more shit on the enemies, so that's very, very powerful. Rib Blood is very simple, we turn this all into Ward. So now it gives us Ward instead of health. We get enough health from leeching spell damage anyway. More health granted. Basically, this is what these do. Just give us more. And we do the um, Blood Splatter. That does a little bit of damage. And it also does a slow, I think. No, it causes them. No, it does nothing. I thought it does bleed. No, it just does damage and slows them. Necrotic. It's funny that it's necrotic and not physical, but whatever. And over here, just more damage. Very simple. Now, for the Profane Veil, that's also a classic one. Of course, we go up here to the Penitent Tangent. So it gives Penance, another negative curse on the enemy. We go up here to the Orbs. These are the Profane Orbs. Um, they gain more cast speed for curses I have and does more damage per curse on the target. So these are insanely synergy with, with your curses. And over here, you deal more global damage to curse enemies while in Profane Veil. That's why we want to have this longer. You could even put more into this, but it's fine. And here, directly casting a curse could reduce the profane veil's remaining cooldown. So if you keep casting your spirit plague and your fissure, your profane veil will be available much more often. You can look into putting more into this. I was thinking about it and not so much into this, but it seems to be kind of nice in this setup. Spirit plague is again just more negative elements, right? We put bleed on them, we put poison on them. Um yeah, we gain wall from it also, we slow them, we put frailty on them, we gain necrotic damage per point of intelligence, it's also insane, or like Spirit Plague does it. Increase global damage over time, then we put Plague on them, and Plague also spreads to other ones. Poison penetration with Plague, plague. 
and increase poison damage. So Spirit Plague just... It's like the COVID build. So that's the idea. Just put all the negative elements in the game on the enemy. That's the basic idea of it. Passives. Acolyte is... A he plays it again a little bit different. He went with armor. Usually people go into vitality. <coughs> or even uh, damage. But he went with armor, which I like, actually. Armor is not bad. And Warlock is almost the same as usual. There's a bunch of additions. Um, this You always got to get this one. Because it gives you Water Gift Threshold for Necro Resistance. Again, Necro Rest is what we want. You put again more in this because of the armor. And then Vault per Second. So he's just beefing up, beefing up his character a lot. I like this. You take less damage while channeling. And you do more damage to damned enemies while channeling. So this is basically in Profane Veil, right? This is when you channel. This is general ability. So you do more damage to them, 160%, but you also take less damage. Because you still take damage over time in Profane Veil. You can't, it's not a immunity thingy, you still take damage. Uh, Withering Classic, you always want to have this. Basically just uh, applies a Wither to the enemies. One point into Ignite, one point into Damned. I added this one, he didn't have it. I like that. One point in Damned. So you have all the all the... Even more chance to put shit on enemies. Int, you always want, you want to stack your int, obviously, vitality as well. Double damage per curse. Great. Our chance for double damage per curse is insanely good. And crit multi. This also helps our, if you remember, our Kafonic Fissure with the Torment. Because uh, the more crit multi you have, the higher the chance, or the higher the damage, rather. Anguish is another curse. And then spell damage for curses increased. Awesome. Also, hitting bosses or uh, triggers the anguish automatically. Very nice. He went with the fleeting crow. I thought this interesting because I thought, why would I put five points into haste? But what this basically does is whenever you cast your skills, you pretty much constantly have haste. So you can get not just through echoes faster, you can also evade stuff easier. If you can keep casting your spirit plague or your fissure, you pretty much constantly have the haste effect on you. So that's actually a nice addition. I like this. I like this. This little little change here he did there. And of course the classic one, more cast speed and cast speed for curses, as well as um cleansing curses on yourself. Pretty nice. Then you put 10 points into Lich, free into this for more in the mana region. Spell damage leech's health is a nice addition. So you actually, because it's a high life build, you pretty much constantly are full life. And of course, more necrotic damage. Very simple. So again, this is actually a classic, truly classic Warlock build. Just a lot of damage over time, ailments, negative ailments on the enemy while you are run around. And as I said, I did 269 corruption actually uh, with Ray. Just fine. Killed the boss with it. Did the echoes just fine. No problem. And this isn't even with, with super legendary items. right? These are all just uniques except for this one. And that's just 40% damage, it's not even that crazy. I got it from Nemesis, by the way, right? You don't need to slam them, you can just get these from Nemesis. Nemesis, Nemesis, whatever. So that's a great build, I like this a lot. And now I wish, I really wish, that last epoch had an armory, where I can save this build as is in my stash, so I can try something else, and next time I come back, I can just reapply it, but we're not dead. Anyway, I hope this build helped. Again, it was not done by me. It was by Seal Floor. God, I'm not going to butcher his name. Seal Floor. Seal Floor, that's his name. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope um, this helped you a lot. And if you have any more questions, let them down in the comments. We can talk. And I will see you next video. <laughs> bye bye.